Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. We received a call from a listener on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline about watering in the evening. Julio and I will discuss it during our first segment. A listener takes at the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and is growing a knockout rose in a container, but is having a problem. We're the plant detectives, and solving problems is what we do. <laughs> Listen in during our second segment. Betsy is one of our listeners and sent us a laundry list of gardening questions. <laughs> in our third segment, we'll tackle reno- renovating an old garden. We continue addressing Betsy's email in our fourth segment. She has a mix of Pachysandra, Vinca vine, and weeds. Yes. She <laughs> wants to eliminate it all and reclaim it to plant a- again. We'll tell you all about it in our fourth segment. <laughs> well, what's bugging you? A listener called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and had something bugging him, and it's not a plant problem. <laughs> Here is call in our final segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva of Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. You know, proper watering techniques solve a lot of problems. And if you disregard them, you're playing with fire. Here's a call. Yes, I have tuned in just a little bit. You were already speaking about uh, the watering. And uh, to water the roots, you know, the plants, but before 7 o'clock, like before the sun came up. And I was wondering if it's okay to water them after 7 or eight in the, in the evening so that, you know, they be watered overnight. So I wasn't too sure about that. So that is my uh, question. Thank you very much. Well, uh, 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 the whole nope. thing, you, you want the plant's foliage to be dry before they go to bed at night. That can't be any clearer than that. You know, 
black spot, powdery mildew, rust, bacteria, bacterial leaf spots, and thracnose. There are all these de- diseases that are enhanced when you have plants that are wet overnight. Uh, and that is not a good thing. So make sure that you water so that the foliage is dry, certainly the foliage. And I don't, I'd even say, you know, that the soil needs to be somewhat dry as well. But, but look, you want to make sure that the foliage is dry before the sun goes down. So that means that if you water two hours before the sun goes down, you're probably okay. But you still are going to have possible issues with root rot and some other things. And most importantly is only water when the soil is dry. We say it all the time. Index Next finger probe. Finger. That's it. Stick your finger That's in the soil. Way. You want it the first inch or so of soil to be dry before you water it. Um, I often, in my hanging baskets, I'll stick my hand up there and I'll grab a pinch of, pinch of soil and I'll, I'll see if it's wet. If it's dry, I'll water. If, if it's wet, you know, I'm leaving it go. And you should do the same thing. And, and the whole trick is watering more at one time and less often. So if you can water more at one time and less often, you may only be watering maybe two, three times uh, a week, depending on what's going on with, uh, you know, the weather and so forth. How many times do we get customers coming in? Well, I water every day. You know, oh, and, um, yeah. That we get a lot of. <laughs> we get that, especially when they bring out the plant and it's so dry that it's like, no, I water every, every day. day. And it's like, yeah. yeah. Or how about uh, when, they, yeah. <laughs> when they bring them in and try to douse it with water before they oh, yeah. bring it in, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's been dead for <laughs> weeks. <you know? laughs> Can I get a refund? But it happens. You know, and, and, it happen. and that, uh, you know. It's 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 plant abuse, quite frankly. Yeah. So the plant police will come out and get and those get people. <laughs> <laughs> not really, no. not really. Got to add another letter to ASPCA. <laughs> Something for the plants. ASPC, I, the animal, you know, the animal. Uh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> animal and plant cruelty. There you go. <laughs> Look, watering deeply, and and that's a term that that's like you know a, a gardener's term. And what that means is, is, again, making sure that that water um, penetrates the roots of the plant all the way down deep because the watering will train those roots to seek out water. And if, it, if you're only doing a little bit of water on the top, mm. you're going to be subject to every drought that comes along, every dry spell, everything. But if you're watering deeper and that it will go deeper in the soil to hunt for those roots because that's the last section that's going to dry out. So your roots are going to be protected from that drought zone that that is probably the first three inches of soil maybe. Wow. And again, water the soil, not the foliage. You won't, don't When you water your plant, you're really not watering your entire plant. What you're watering is the roots because right. the foliage does not get any benefit from – from watering, you know, maybe a little bit of misting or, or what have you, if you were talking about houseplants. Mm-hmm. But the humidity that we have outdoors is more than enough to sustain most plants. Uh, again, water the soil, water the soil. Can I remind our viewers and our listeners to mm-hmm. also, if you have mulch, to remember that you should continue to water a little bit more than regularly. Right. I actually uh, dried out a couple plants last year because I didn't water thoroughly through the mulch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good point. Mm-hmm. Good point. Because you see the mulch gets wet and you think, oh, I'm done. Right. You know, uh-uh, you need to water it the same way, You're, but it may repl- or require more. And then always have like a check spot. So you move the mulch away to check that. So you don't stick your finger in the mulch. You, you put your finger in the soil. Always, always, always. Well, look, you know, water, morning watering is hard on working people. Yeah. I, I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I have a funny story. I have uh, drip irrigation on these big window boxes that are up above, you know, they're up tall and yeah. I can't reach with my hose and such. I left it on for 18 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Drenched irrigation. Yeah, yeah maybe even late. I, I uh, yeah. And, and so well, well watered. <laughs> timers, okay, timers, drip irrigation, soaker hoses, and, and like Aaron said, mulch. It are really important. It, what I have a three-zone timer that I haven't installed yet. 
And if I did, I wouldn't have been watering my plants for 18 hours. Now, <laughs> I don't have to water them today or probably oh, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where you can set up a, a timer. And it, my son-in-law, Steve, he's got timers everywhere. Oh, good for him. And that, uh, <laughs> he's smart. It's like, I guess, it's like, I don't know. He, he got all this stuff on Amazon <laughs> and that uh, he's got it figured out. Way to go, Steve. Yeah, because uh, he doesn't get any free replacements. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, and, and that will help you. Um, but you got to remember if it's raining, you know, you may not want them to go off every other day or something, so on and so forth. So even with people with so, uh, sprinkler systems, they should get a rain uh, gauge in, yeah, installed. Yeah, yeah, um, it, it's pretty easy installation, to be honest. With you. They have them now where they're uh, just Bluetooth connected. Wow. And so that the, the uh, sensor goes outside, and then if it rains, it, it shuts off your sprinkler system and pauses All it right. for a day. Nice. Um, it's a great idea. Yeah, it is. But again, it's for those folks that, I mean, I've got to water my plants. I mean, i got to get to work. If I, if I can get to work by by 8.30, I've got to start watering my plants by 7. You know, mm. sleep, plants, sleep, plants. My wife came to me the other day and said, you know, I really can tell that you enjoy gardening now. Because I'm up first thing in the morning before I fix my kids' breakfast or anything like that or their lunch for school outside watering. Wow, that is because I don't go. have a sprinkler system. Wow. Yet. I don't yeah. have a sprinkler. Well, yet, there you so. go. Yeah. I mean, that's that's great. Also, yeah. it's a little bit of peace and calm. Absolutely, yeah. morning starts. Start your day off right. There you yeah. go. A little yeah. meditation. Yeah. That's a, you do. That's hey. a, it's a great thing. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely, that's good. Get out there in the yeah. garden, folks. Yeah, that's right. That's Early. right. All right. If you've got questions about watering or or even timers, any of those things, uh, we can help you. Call the hotline, 609-685-1880. We'll be right back, right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the Internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced. Because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects? Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus? Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles? Blue Bottle. A BioAdvanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. BioAdvanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BioAdvanced All-in-One Rose and Flower Care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. We received a text on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline asking about growing knockout roses in containers. Here's the text. Hi. I love your Sunday show. I bought a double knockout rose bush, and I'm planning to grow it in a container. I has no choice after the beautiful roses fell off the plant and produced a new batch of roses, they didn't look as full as the first roses. They had many petals and looked like real roses. Did I get fooled or I'm doing something wrong? Well, um, pruning. Don't fear the shears. Don't fear the shears. Here's a couple of things. Knockout roses look like 
real roses during certain times. And there's a single knockout and there's a double knockout. The single knockouts do not have as many petals as the double knockout. And you said you bought a double knockout. It is a time where they begin to open for about two weeks or so. Their flowers look like roses. Then when they start to mature and they open up fully, right before the petals drop, they look almost like the original knockout rose where it isn't as many petals. And it's just the flower opening up. My suggestion is any time that your roses have finished flowering, whether it's a knockout rose, a hybrid tea rose, or floribunda, grandiflora, that you want to prune them back to where the first or below the fifth cluster of leaves. And what do, what do I mean by that? I don't mean where there's, you know, coming out of the, the stem five, you know, five different leaf nodules. It's actually when they set their leaves out. And if you look close at a rose, that it'll be clusters from the top. It'll be maybe, say, three leaves on a little branch that comes out. You want to go and count it. There's three, there's four, and then below there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's where I cut it. Below the fifth leaf because that encourages blossom production, not uh, foliage production. And it probably would make your plant bloom more roses at one time rather than having it so that it's uh, – here and there less blooming you know and that's why when we we talk about the repeat blooming uh whether it's hydrangeas or the encore azaleas that they're always the best show right out of the gate because they're all timed the same and when you prune them that's going to help their timing be together now there's good news there's good news growing knockout roses and containers or most roses to be honest uh, is not going to be a problem. That they've been growing in containers since they were babies. They've never been put into the ground and into soil and then transplanted or dug up and then put into pots. They've always been in a pot. So you can do this. But the one thing is you have to remember to get a big enough pot so that it can live in there for a while. And you want to go basically twice the size of the of the root system so you give it lots of room to grow, and then it can stay there for a while. You got to make sure that it has good drainage holes. Yeah, that's because, so important, right? Because uh-huh. if it's holding water, especially with roses, what do roses have? Roses have disease issues, yeah. and that if you have good drainage, then you're getting that that water away from the plant. You're going to still have to treat it as if it was planted in the ground, and that means what, Julio? You gotta make, yeah, you got to make sure that you know um, you're you're feeding it. You got to make sure you're feeding it right, and uh, you, you're taking care of it uh, with insecticide and uh, disease control and things like that in order to keep it going. Right, and and it it's really become easy where there's all, it's like all in one bottle. Like there's an insect control and disease control together. Sometimes there's even a fertilizer. Um, it comes in a granular form where you can sprinkle it on the soil and it absorbs into the root system and out towards the branches, or you can use it as a spray. And that those um, those control products work really, yeah. really well. And it will make caring for your roses so much easier. Uh, when you're planting, make sure that you're picking a, a good draining potting soil. Uh, Espoma has some great soils. And you want to make sure that you've got it planted and tight. And, and also, don't bury it. You don't want to bury it. You want to make sure that that root is for the root ball, the very top of the container where the roots are, that that is level at the top, even slightly raised, then sinking it in the bottom and then putting two inches of soil on top of that because that would be bad for your plant. Uh, What else you got, Julio? Where where should they be planted? Yeah, you need uh, six to eight hours of light. So you got to make sure it's not, you know, less than that because you're not going to get many flowers. Yeah. You know, so lighting is really important to, to have that knockout rose in that container where you have six to eight hours of sunlight. Right. And then just like we talked about in the previous segment, index finger probe. probe that's Make it. sure that you water it when it goes dry. Mm-hmm. Don't overwater it. 
uh, the it's pretty amazing where the knockouts don't really need the kind of watering that maybe some other plants do, like a hydrangea, for instance. Hydrangeas love the like hydrangea hydro. You know, loves a lot of, of water. Where roses and knockout roses in particular do not need as much water as, like, say, your annuals do. And, and so water it when it needs it, develop a pattern, and go from there. Mm-hmm. Anything else to add, Julio? Yeah, we, we talked about fertilizing it, you know, with all in one. You know, it has a fertilizer in it with a disease control and um, right and, and fungus control. But, you know, you could also add water soluble to that. Oh, you know, yeah. 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 You know, Absolutely. Make sure you're you're getting a, a beautiful flowering out of that. Right. And also the leaves will be greener. Right. It it if you do a water soluble fertilizer on on your roses, it will look stunning because they'll have that green foliage with the a good uh flower production and that I mean every other week is what is you want to do. Oh, yeah. And that it's it's one of those things. It doesn't last very long. You know, it's not like trying to, like, say, for instance, if you have a big meal, you know, you basically, you know, can can sustain that for, you know, for a long, long, long yeah. time. But if you go and you take a daily vitamin and it's not going to last that long to sustain you. So it's not like you're getting the same nutrients. Value. You get a, a good boost from water soluble fertilizer in your plant, just like you do by by taking a multivitamin, right. it, it's important to do because your plants need it. There, there's it's in a different way that the plant absorbs it from the root system, and that it's immediately available. It doesn't have to break down over time with heat or or um, basically water as well. But yeah. this is instantly available to your plant. So if you have any if, plants that are kind of like looking peak it or just kind of you know yellowish, yellowish side yep. try water soluble fertilizer and go ahead and start using that and by i would say by the third application your plant will be like back, brand new back again yeah brand new yep. all back right we'll steps. be back in the garden right after these messages Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com. Dot com And be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m., 
WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. One of our listeners, Betsy, sent us an email requiring two segments to answer. The first up is about an old garden she wants to renovate. Here is part of her email. When I bought my home 30 years ago, there was a large parking lot in the backyard. I had black, it was blacktop, approximately 35 feet by 15 feet, removed and started planting perennials in the space. Some plants came from the big box stores and, <coughs> <coughs> ah, yeah, and many from neighbors and friends. I also planted a few daffodil bulbs, bulbs. 30 years later, I have more of a mess than a garden. <laughs> there are tall plants hiding smaller plants. A few species are quite invasive and would like to take over, and there are literally hundreds of daffodil buds competing for space. Therefore, I would like to redo the garden. The question is how and when. About five of the plants are large and thriving, so I would like to keep them. A few others need to be moved. Getting out the roots of the invasive plants will be difficult. Should I dig out the good plants, put them in pots for a month, and spray the others with an insecticide or herbicide? Should I wait until everything dies back in the fall and try to dig out the invasive roots? Other ideas? <laughs> well, well. All right. We will bypass the came from big box stores. No wonder why it's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Get it all in. <laughs> it's a anyway. mess. All right. Decide what you want to keep Mm -hmm. and then put them in like basic nursery containers. Go to your local garden center and ask. Um, Honestly, sometimes those containers are quite expensive and they may say no. So don't be disappointed. Uh, If you have some pots, that would be great. Um, Get the biggest plants first and and dig those out. We are approaching the time uh, that they should be okay to to transplant. Depends on what the the varieties are. But if you get a big enough root ball, you should be absolutely Mm -hmm. fine. Um, Again, no matter if you spray or not, it doesn't really matter. Because you still have to pull everything out. The only good thing about spraying first is that you're killing it. And the likelihood of them just re, re-sprouting from, say, roots that you left in the ground, that they'll actually die. And so the root would be dead. It would be dead all the way through to the root. You want to use high-yield Killzall, which is a glyphosate product, and you can plant a week later. So, fast. again, that's, that's high-yield Killzall, and you can plant a week later. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, it's uh, an active ingredient has been used for years. Uh, and that, uh, again, I, I that's what I use at my house. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. um, once you're done and you get everything pulled out and cleaned up and you have your plants saved that you want to do, you want to till the entire garden. Rent a rototiller and you want to add this. It gives you an opportunity to add Um, soil amendments that you weren't able to before and tilling it and getting that that air in the soil and you get it loosened and then again we want you to add bumper crop into that soil because that will make that soil more alive Uh, i can only imagine after the blacktop was removed i know that's a lot of years ago but it was all compacted soil probably subsoil and it probably wasn't very good but now you have a chance to have a blank canvas. And, again, you can do so much. Oh, and it's a big area. It's, it's 15 huge. by, what was it, Holyo? 15 35, by 30? 35 by 15. Yeah, and that where you can create elevations by creating berms, say, in the back of it. How is it viewed? That's a big question. How is it viewed? Is it viewed from just one side so that you could have a a berm in the back? Or is it viewed from four sides or even two sides to where you can keep an elevation uh, in the middle Middle, and it actually work that way? Pretty. Plants are easy. Plants are easy. You know, you eat the tallest things in the center, shortest things towards the front. But you don't want to restrict this thought 
to just plants. Think about, you know, pathways, like having like a stone pathway through it so that you actually can walk through the middle of it. You know, you don't need a wide pathway. It could it could be two, two foot mm-hmm. is wide enough, mm-hmm. and it just creates a visual break in the garden. Designing a good landscape or a garden is all about its color, its texture, and its form. So color of the plants, obviously, pink and blue and white and but then it's also the textures like that ferns give you that it's that that light airy texture or other plants that it gives you more of a bulky feel that that's the, what what I mean by texture and form is like a pyramidal is it is it you know a hedge it's those types of things and and again don't restrict yourself to planting one plant you know we're not, you know, I'm going to put one of these, and I'll get one of these, and I'll put one of these, and I'll put one of these. Instead, you know, think of planting maybe in groups of three, in clusters of three. You can use ground cover, uh, you know, even grasses like liriope in clusters of three and make pockets of plants rather than trying to do one at a time. I, I always love that you can plant, always plant, like the, like there's always room for more oh, yeah. with perennials. That you don't have to have it done. And make sure you're not planning it all at one time. You're going to spend a year planning this. And if you're listening to us, you're going to take a year to plant this garden. Not just do it in one weekend or one you know, two weeks. Yeah. Wait. Because the plants that you can get now, like you can get coneflowers now and you can get black-eyed Susans and different types of, of like Montauk daisies are coming. But you can't necessarily get the shasta daisies that bloom in spring or you can't get like um the ground cover mountain pinks or creeping flocks that is in spring there are things that you can't get like for instance i mean you probably get hollyhocks now but you're not going to be able to get a good selection of a still the even hostas there's going to be limited selection of hosta that you would be able to see for the spring Mm -hmm. so take your time and then again, don't okay. just use perennials. Use trees. Like you could plant a tree if you're looking at it from four sides. Plant a tree in the center of it or plant, you know, not big trees. I'm not talking about giant oak trees. I'm talking about some medium and even small trees. Japanese maple, blood good Japanese maple, oh, yeah. where it gets to be about 15, 15 to 20 yeah. feet. Nice. Bright, you know, great red color in the leaf. Mm-hmm. And it just gives you a little different perspective also you know i was i was looking at one of the plants that we have at bloomers and and it's a uh it's a um coral bark maple and beautiful in the winter as well as growing the rest of the year use little boulders and i like i say little it's probably weighs 100 pounds but it's a boulder that would be the size of say instead of planting three perennials together it would be a boulder that's that size that gives it a little bit of a different dynamic feel to it. And again, it's it's all about color, texture, and form. And that includes the any boulders or stone and, and that we want you to mulch it and make sure you mulch with a, a good, unobtrusive mulch. Um, I know my project that I'm working on right now is, is a landscape around my deck. I'm going to use um, pine straw. Um, pine straw is used down south a lot. I like the way it looks. Aaron I saw Shaker. it everywhere last week in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. That, 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 everywhere you went everywhere. to Georgia, and that's where it's it's used. And Absolutely, it, and it's uh, it's not like they're grinding up stumps or pallets or anything like some of the recycled uh, mulch is. That uh, I mean, it, that's what I'm going to use, and it's light and fluffy and airy. But uh, it's just a different – it's different for us up here. And, if, you know, us Yankees haven't picked it up yet. We've got to figure it out. But, it, again, it, it's it's important to, to know your tights and how high you want things to get. You don't want it to block your house. You want it to accentuate your house. And it's important just to, again, think bigger than just plants, that one plant at a time. Right. Oh, that would look nice in my garden. Right. It would look nice where, you know, would it look nice, like say you put creeping flocks over climbing that boulder that you put in. Yeah, now we're talking, you know, would it look like a nice edge to that stone? 
if you wanted to put blue stone block, two foot by say 18 inch or two by two blue stone uh, like pavers, and I mean real blue stone, not, not fake concrete pavers, that as a walkway in that stone bed, go ahead and put like say um, woolly time in between the blocks so that it actually is, looks it looks like it's supposed to be there. And it's uh, it gives you some, um, I mean, it actually it's soft on your feet and you can walk on it without killing it. There's a whole line of plants that are uh, one from center to nursery is the blue blanket. I think that's what they're, they call theirs. Is that right, Julio? That that's right? correct. Yeah. Blue that blanket, is, is right? Yeah. And then there's uh, steppables Steppable. and... Yeah. And um, that there's all type of they they basically call them treading plants where you can can walk on them, uh, everything from yarrow to you name it, and that you can put them between your your walkway stones. Aaron, to your like point, you yeah. To your point earlier, um, a garden is just not about the plants, right? Right. And so we did a segment last week called Garden Art. I, Betsy mm-hmm. I, and all of our listeners, I implore you to go ahead and check that segment out. It's on our YouTube page. Uh, you can follow us at Bloomer's Home Garden. Um, also, um, just to get some more inf- in, you know, inspiration about you know what could go in your garden to right. accent everything that you already have and that you want to bring in later on. So right, make it personal. To- Absolutely, make that make garden a personal, and and that you know, stand by what you pick. If you decided right. to, you know, get the boy peeing. <laughs> a little statue. <laughs> hey, own it. <laughs> no. Or the bird on the, on yeah, the back yeah, of the, yeah, the gnome. The no, not, man, I don't no. think that is a good taste anywhere. But, <laughs> but still, it, it you know, bird feeders. You know, put put in a bird feeder, or even it's a great place for a platform feeder, um, where it attracts all different types of birds. It it's important to to make it more dynamic. And and you said that that it had gotten out of hand. It's going to need maintenance. It's going to need maintenance. Yeah. And the same product that kills all that you can spray as long as you do it safely when it's not windy. And if you need to, we, you could use that. It's like a, a liquid hoe. So you'd go in through, you'd, you'd just spray the weeds that come up um, and just make sure you know that it's a weed and not a plant. Although description of a weed is a plant, any plant that's in the wrong spot. And where that will, you know, help you to, to, to do, to clean up. Otherwise, hey, it's weed aerobics. Get out there. Yeah. Bend down. Yeah. Pick a weed. Stand up. Stretch, you know. Yeah. Turn to the right. You know, back down. Give Cha-cha me 20. now, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, where, you know, it's a great exercise weeding. Right, Hula? You always say that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm more of a sp- Kills all the kind of guy. guy. Yeah. 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 Quick and I want it dead. Yeah. All the way down <laughs> to the roots. <laughs> I have to do this entire bed. Yeah, <laughs> but it it also it it is like Aaron and I were we were talking where it's a, it's a little bit of a, a meditating moment where you yeah. spend time out in nature, which we don't get. Yeah. The cell phone and everything else, it just overwhelms us. Mm-hmm. Overwhelms us. That's right. So make it yours. Consider like things like you don't even think about. It. What about a section of of plants that have a fragrance? Yeah, and I don't mean just roses. People think, oh, roses. No, no. Like like here is a shrub where a dwarf lilac, a dwarf Korean lilac. Put that in. Great, great fragrance. Oriental lilies. I mean, stargazer lilies. There's nothing that has more fragrance, and there's a variety called Casablanca, which is a white. Lily, very tall, but man, you can smell it a mile away. So just think about putting in a fragrance garden or even a moonlight garden, like where there's a section of it where you can see it from your house, where the, like for instance, some the, some of the plants where they're open at night and then, hey, you can even put our glowing petunias in if you want to <laughs> yeah. and you can see them glow at night. Um, there's so much to do. You have a blank canvas and that I would, you know, if you're going to do something like that, divide it up in quarters. You know, you do, you know, it's 15 feet wide by 35. It's not like you're going to be able to do everything. But at least a couple of plants here and there. And a blend of everything from, you know, small trees, a couple of shrubs, and dwarf conifers. 
Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot you can do, but don't like just get hung up on all perennials. Mm-hmm. It can be certainly, but not it, if you put in other plants, it makes the perennials look better. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you take, you know, a dwarf Hinoki cypress that is dark green, grows real slow, has great foliage and texture in front and behind a flowering plant, you know, that has the flower and is gaudy and, and brilliant flowers. It's going to make those flowers look that much better. Color, texture, form. Color, texture, form. It's about all I can I can say on yeah. the subject. Oof. Oh, on the radio. Wonderful. Go out there. Yeah. yeah go out Have there. Have some fun. Yep. Get it done. Yeah. Beautiful. Get it done. Send us pictures. Mm-hmm. We'd love to see yeah, it. We'd like to see this transformation there. You know our email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be right back with more from Betsy right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's triple action contains 70% neem oil, and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide labeled to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's triple action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. In her email Betsy's renovation included getting rid of Pachysandra. Here's what her email said. The second nightmare is in the front. Betsy has a husky voice, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. (laughs) The second nightmare is in the front of the house where I planted a very large bed with Pachysandra some 20 years ago. It's now knee high in Pachysandra, vinca vines, and weeds. It has to go. Do you think that mowing it down would be sufficient? Spray an herbicide before or after mowing it? Well, Ah, my stepson, Brett, ripped out the entire backyard of Danielle's house. That was all English ivy by hand. By hand. Strong fella. No sprays, no things. Like, he he just did it. And and 
you know, Brett, if you're listening, he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he <laughs> just ha- wanted it gone uh-huh. and he did it by hand and, and it's staying pretty clean. But regardless if you spray it or you go and you pull it out by hand, uh, you're still going to have to get rid of it because you have to pull it out. Mm-hmm. If you ride over with a lawnmower, it's going to wrap around the blade and it's going to choke out the lawnmower. It, you're not going to have good success. Even like there are some weed eaters or um, trimmers that have a metal blade on the bottom. You could maybe use that, but it's still, it, it it's, I don't know, you're going to have to spray it at some point because like the other garden bed you want to kill everything down to the root but you're still going to have to pull it out by hand now if you use again the the high yield kills all that will kill it okay you may have to do a couple of strays uh sprays now pachysandra is like a favorite ground cover because it is so does so well and in It respects its borders. It doesn't climb up trees and it doesn't usually jump sidewalks on or walkways and get into uh, the driveway or anything like that. So remember what you're doing. What are you going to replace it with? So get that set first before you start killing everything because all this requires work. You did it 20 years ago, Betsy. I think there's a reason. reason I I know 20 years ago I was a little more ambitious. Um, But again... You need to, to kill it, get rid of it, and then also you need to, it gives you a chance to improve the soil. You're going to turn over that bed, and you're going to rake out any of those roots that you can get out, and then make sure that you're back to bare soil. So you've got, again, a blank canvas to work on. Um, it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of work, but it, it also can get done. Again, riding over with your lawnmower sounds great, but the reality is, is that it's not made for that and that you probably are going to choke out your lawnmower um, than if you did it another way. You know, have any, any, any other suggestions, Julio? No, I think, you know, like uh, Brett, I think she ought to take Brett's uh, <laughs> to yeah. the young guy. Sorry, Brett won't be, won't be Brett's available. Brett's not for sale. Uh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, I was going to say, take Brett over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> we would do good. Yeah, but again, it, you need to get it out and it needs to be sprayed first, kill it down to oh, the root, down. let it turn brown, then start pulling it out. Um, with kills all, you can, you can go and replant, like say you're spray, you wanted to kill a section of grass because it was all weeds and you wanted to reseed it. You, all you have to do is wait a week. It's not one of those, uh, it doesn't necessarily poison it, uh, poison the, the soil like some weed controls do. This one, it, uh, basically is, uh, from the plants leaves through the root and then, uh, then it's done. It has, a uh, you know, it, uh, it doesn't stay around very long. So spray it with high yield kills all and then wait, let it die down. Let it get, you want it to die first and then you pull it out. And again, you're going to put a rototiller over it. You're going to rake out any of the root system that's left. Okay. And then you're going to add soil amendments, improve that soil because this is the one chance you get to do it. And then you have your blank canvas and you Hold can up. decide what you're going to do. All right, Betsy. Good luck. Remember, yeah. send us pictures. We want to. We want to see. It's a big area. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll be back right after this. Spring is here, and people have a lot of questions about weed and feed. There's one simple answer: Bio Advanced Five in One Weed and Feed. Just one application kills lawn weeds and prevents new weeds and crabgrass up to six months. And if crabgrass is already growing, it kills that too. Plus, 5-in-1 feeds and greens your lawn. Bio-advanced 5-in-1 weed and feed. Get more from the blue bag. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma Organic Potting Mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit espoma.com for a retailer near you. 
Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So, what's bugging you? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, we got a call this week and a listener uh, called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline, which is 609-685-1880. And he has a beef. A beef. <laughs> and I don't mean hamburger. <laughs> Here, listen to his call. Hello. I would like to f- find out about the radio stations and the times that they are and the days. I know it's Saturday, and you talk so fast, I couldn't write it down, the the days and the times on Saturday. And if you do it Sunday, I'm not sure. I know you're a busy guy, and your partner is busy, too. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Well, well. I'm sorry. I'm from New Jersey. I can't help but talk fast. <laughs> yeah, you're a fast talker. All right, well, again, I'm from yeah. Jersey. I know, yeah, it's yeah. like, <laughs> you know, yeah. if, it, if you don't talk fast enough, nobody hears you and you get left behind. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> here, here you go. Yeah, yeah. Th- this is what the information you want to know. We, we are on three radio stations. Two cover the Philadelphia, Delaware Valley, South Jersey market. Uh, and that those stations, again, it, it's, uh, if you think about from Delaware uh, out to Lancaster, over to Allentown, to the Jersey Shore, um, all, of, all of South Jersey. And again, I, I, always, I always say that you need to go by allegiance of football team. If you are an Eagles fan or in Eagles country, these are the stations that you need to listen to. <laughs> okay. On Saturday... 6 a.m. in the morning. And then it's rebroadcast in the after late afternoon, early evening at 5 p.m. We are on the word 95.3 FM WNWR. And it also, the same exact show is playing the same exact time on their AM station, which is 1540 a.m. So that's Saturday, first thing, early morning, 6 a.m., and then 5 p.m. at night on nine FM 95.3, the word. Now we're again on Saturday on WWDB at 8 a.m. Uh, that's talk 860 a.m. And again, it's Saturday morning, 8 a.m., on 860 WWDB. On Sunday, we are in the tri-state New York City area, which is North Jersey, New York City, Southern Connecticut, Staten Island, parts of Long Island. Uh, And you can listen uh, each week, all these are every week the same times, no matter if it's the New York stations or the Philadelphia stations, uh, that on the New York stations were 8 a.m. on Sunday. So you can listen to us before you go to church. On Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. And again, that's Sunday morning, 8 a.m. in the New York tri-state area, 
And that's Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Now here's the good news. We are everywhere online. On your favorite podcast provider, Apple, Spotify, Google, et cetera, just do, you can do just simple, just do a search for Bloomers in the Garden. We'll, we'll come up. We're also on YouTube. And that, you just can do, do a search for Bloomers in the Garden. And there we are. And we're on, you know, any of your, your search engines like Google, DuckDuckGo, Bing, Yahoo will show up. And please subscribe. If you listen to us by podcast or YouTube, please subscribe and then rate us five stars. You know, it's, we do this each week and, and that uh, Aaron works real, real hard. Don't you, Aaron? I this sure is your do. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. And, and that guy. we're... We're trying to get um, our listener base and our subscribers up. You know, we're garden center guys. We just we just do this, and, and um, we're doing it organically. We're not hiring somebody to go and inflate our numbers, uh, but we want our listeners to to show that yeah, they listen. So please subscribe and please rate us. If you have any questions about it or do you want to be a sponsor, we're looking for sponsors. Anybody, you give the hotline a call at six zero nine six eight five one. Eight eight zero. Thank you. I will try to talk slower. slower yeah, we'll, we'll try to get him slower. <laughs> we'll be. I can't do it. I we'll be back in the garden right after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Wow. Mm-hmm. Julio. My goodness. And Betsy's got her oh. work cut out <laughs> yeah, for it, doesn't she? Really. <laughs> she wow. does. Wow. A big show. Lots, yeah. of, lots of great gardening advice. Yeah, really. Um, from... Yeah. Watering, how to water, oh, to how to set up and the principles of, of garden and landscape yeah. design. Yeah, container, uh, putting your knockout rows in a container. Right. Yeah. But Betsy, I need to admonish you. Get out of the box store. Oh, yeah. The information that you're getting from mostly from amateurs, go to your local garden center. That's where the good information is, and that's where the better plants are. So go to your local garden center, everybody. We'll see you next week in the garden. See you in the garden.